What's up guys? It's been a little bit since we've posted up a Modern Meta Breakdown video and I figure this is the perfect time to talk about a fun deck that we've been seeing on camera. It's kind of been refined over the last couple months. Uh, we did talk about like the red um, green Vengevine style that used Hollow One before, but this is the more, I, I want to say optimized because it's stronger than that version um this is known as the red black uh hollow one style it's just it's got more explosive powers to it so it's it's a a good deck to play um if you're looking for this sort of style this is the way to go um i've been doing a lot of other stuff not just magic related content lately I've gotten uh to really enjoy sea of thieves so i've been streaming that up every night this week um i won't be streaming up every single night coming forward but i would like to try to at least stream up uh, one to two times a week, um, not just magic related content. So every Monday is always going to be magic. So if you guys have not followed um, twitch.tv or youtube.com uh, slash modern magic Mondays, you can check that out. That is weekly modern coverage that we do. Uh, but I will be continuing to do other games um, over on my channel, which is of course um, twitch and youtube.com slash the real nan man or just nan man. Um, so let's talk about the deck. The deck is a fun one. Um, it's powerful. We got a couple people running it at our shop. Um, so let's pull it up so you guys can be able to see and we'll kind of get our discussion going with it. So uh, black red or red black hollow one is the name of the game. We're going to go over creatures for the deck first. We'll talk about the spells next. Um, highlight the lands briefly. Talk about sideboard. If we've got time, we'll go into details about um, ways to kind of interact and try to beat the deck right what, what are ways that you can sideboard against it so uh of course you've got to start with hollow one right so we've got our hollow one um i'm gonna throw up at least four creatures real quick bam 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 all right so hollow one uh is the big one that the neck is the deck is named after uh the objective of this is to be able to cheat this into play for either no cost or one cost so if you have cycled or discarded two cards this turn, this guy uh, loses two costs for it for each one you are doing that. So if you say, okay, I've done it twice, he only costs one. But if I've done it three times, he's free, All right? So a 4-4 four, four for, for no mana is pretty good. A 4-4 four, four for one mana is good too. So, you, you know, we've hoping to get something like that. But if you don't have a super explosive start with him, then you can say, you know what? We can throw down our Flame Blade Adept here, Adept. Um, and he is a 1-2 with Menace. The Flame Blade is just as good as the Hollow One and can easily close out gains because of that Menace. Uh, you have to commit a lot more. And if you're sitting here just cycling or drawing cards, discarding cards to kind of get set up to play a Hollow One, that works out really well uh, to buff him up. Because every time you're doing it, Flame Blade gets bigger. So... Um, hollow one whenever you're cycling or discarding cards reduces the cost whenever you're cycling or discarding cards when you have flame blade on the field he does get bigger so you can be able to easily push for four or five damage a turn with this guy so that's a really nice turn one play that you guys have to be aware of those are kind of the um, big um, creatures that you're gonna have to say all right I need something to deal with these right something single targeted related to take these guys out the other two creatures that I have pulled up here are flame wake Phoenix um, and our blood gas right so these guys are the re recursion creatures these guys are going to continue to come back uh, if you kill them so you have to be aware of that and you have to have some graveyard hate so one of the powers of this deck is you can have that one really strong creature like hollow one like flame blade and all right cool it's been we've been grinding for a little bit you finally killed them off well now i have a way to get creatures back all right it's gone a little bit longer we've gone this grindy thing um i need to kind of get back into this game and blood gas and flame wake phoenix both allow you to do this of course blood back uh, bloodbath <laughs> blood gas returns from your graveyard whenever you play a land it's got that landfall ability that uh you can return it from your graveyard to the battlefield now he can't block so don't even think about trying that uh he is just his sole purpose is to try to attack your opponent now he also has haste if your opponent has 10 or less life so there is that now flame wake phoenix normally costs three mana but it could only cost one red depending on how your board state is set up so flying and haste is nice you've got that evasion you've got some kind of burst damage down with this flame weight 
and he has to attack each turn if able. So again, Flame Wake is not able to block. He has to be attacking. Um, but he's got this ferocious ability. So it says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with a power four or greater, you can pay one red. If you do, you return Flame Wake Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if you've got your hollow one out, if you've got your flame blade that you've drawn and discarded cards and cycled and done other things, you can bring back this flame wake phoenix and push for extra damage. That extra two is quite relevant when you're trying to nuke them down, right? So those are kind of our main um, creatures. We've got our delve creatures that are in here too. Um, Gurmog Angler is the big one. Again, hey, I can get back my flame wake phoenix once I get a Gurmog out. So you're dumping a lot of cards into your graveyard, having these big powerful delve creatures is really important Gurmog, of course is that five five you do have to delve six away for that zombie fish and then tassiger is in here some people are not running tassiger anymore um some are it's fine uh, you know again cost um five delve cards one black for a four or five so it does allow you to be able to use that flame wake phoenix um you're not going to be worried about doing his activated ability it's really just here's another delve creature that i've got kind of thing um so those are our kind of creature bases again you're in this sort of mindset of i have these powerhouse creatures right i'm either going to be relying on hollow one gurmog angler or flame blade as my initial here's big swings coming at you dealing a lot of damage you have to answer these and then my flame wake phoenix my blood gas are to help finish you off kind of thing so you do have to be aware of that is normally if you're playing against a creature based deck um you're going to want like board wipes and stuff like that but even with board wipe effects this red black hollow one deck can come back in the game with flame wake phoenix with blood gas with just using the gurmags later on the taskers later on to delve away all those creatures that you killed so you do have to be aware of that sort of strategy uh when you're facing this deck so i'm gonna throw up some of the spells here because i keep talking about these cycling these discarding these things like that um so we've got the street wraith has that cycle hey i'm gonna pay two life i'm gonna draw a card dis and i have to discard street wraith so if you are cycling, that reduces Hollow One's cost. That buffs up Flame Wake uh, or the Flame Blade Adept. Uh, so you do have that sort of uh, mentality that you have to think about when you're uh, using this deck. Uh, but the spells. So we've got a couple of our turn one red spells: Faithless Looting and Burning Inquiry. Okay. So these are our hey. I'm just going to draw some stuff. Maybe I'll get this hollow one to be super cheap. Or if I already have um, my flame blade out, I'll be in a good spot to make him bigger. So you can say turn one, I'm really hoping to either play a flame blade or play a faithless looting or play a burning inquiry. That's my turn one ideal play. That's what I'm really hoping to have happen with this deck. And if I can't, then maybe I can say, you know what, turn one flame blade, turn two goblin lore. And that is a card that pretty much nobody cared about up until this deck came out. Same with like Burning Inquiry. Some people were trying it every now and again, uh, like in Dredge and things like that. But for the most part, most people weren't really seeing too much. Burning Inquiry wasn't seeing too much play. Goblin lore was seeing zero play in Modern up until this list. And gum lore costs two, so a little bit more expensive. I say a little more, it costs two, guys. It's all right. You draw four cards, and you discard three at random from your hand. So Burning Inquiry is both players, you and your opponent, will draw three, then discard three at random. So again, hey, if I'm discarding three cards, that means that hollow one costs nothing. Zero. Boom. Just played this four, four. So now I've got all this mana, so I can be able to uh, choose to return my phoenix from my graveyard all right that could be one thing that you do with this you could say oh i'm going to use this mana and delve away those cards that i just discarded to get this gurmog angler so it's got this great fuel for your graveyard but goblin lore really helped to propel the deck that you can just have some crazy plays um you know i've seen some screenshot shots of magic online where people have gotten lucky and been able to turn one burning inquiry cycle street wraiths right and sit there and have all four hollow ones out on the board 
right? Before your opponent even gets a chance to play a land. So that is really kind of saying, hey, I hope that you have something to keep yourself alive because you're going to die, right? That's not... It, it, the deck is super explosive and something that you guys have to be aware of. Uh, it is powerful, right? So the deck is just full of these draw discard spells, right? So we've got uh, a play set of Goblin Lore, play set of Faithless Looting, a play set of Burning Inquiry. The Collector Brutality is in here. Another way to kind of discard cards. It's got the just all the modes that can be relevant. You can kill off a creature with it. You can gain life when, hey, you're cycling with Street Wraiths. There's a good chance that you are losing life. So being able to gain some back is pretty nice. Um, looking at your opponent's hand and stripping away that instant or sorcery is also good. So really nice. And then, of course, hey, it's red. Why would we not run Lightning Bolt to kill off a creature, finish you off for that last little bit of damage as I've been swinging in and bursting you down? So that's what is, is set up for it. It only runs 18 lands, doesn't need any more. You can sit there and get by on that 1-2 mana because you should be able to find the other cards that you need. You're going to be drawing a lot of cards, right? Burning Inquiry draws you 3. Uh, Goblin Lord draws you 4. Faithless Looting draws you two. You also have the ability to flash it back later on. Street Wraith lets you draw a card. So you have a lot of draw spells in this deck to kind of power up your stuff. The land base that you can see, there's not too much with the whole fetching and shocking and stuff like that, right? You, you, you're you fine because you're running 18 lands. The Black Cleave Cliffs works out great. Those are kind of our fast lands. If you have two uh, or fewer lands, guess what? This can enter untapped, and the likelihood of entering untapped is pretty high. We've got two mountains in here, a basic swamp, two blood crypt, and then we've got our fetchables, right? We got four Bloodstained Myers, four Scalding Tarn. It doesn't have to be a Scalding Tarn. If you just have another red fetch land if you've got the you know the red green one wooden foothills um go with those right you don't have to just rely on scalding tarns and then the single stopping ground really is that's this is my sideboard ability i can splash into green for sideboard stuff so talk sideboard real quick engineers in here it's a great one grim lava mancer i don't know how many times that i've been playing against this deck and they've thrown out a grim lava mancer i'm just like well that's annoying this is like guaranteed two damage to me every single turn because you're going to be having all this fuel in your graveyard all right leyline of the void is a really good one because lately i've been playing grix's death shadow and i've played against this deck and a lot of times i'm hoping to do these battles against them and have a gurmog angler out there to kind of get in the way and they just say no you don't get to use your graveyard i'm going to use my graveyard but you're not allowed to use yours so that's a really good one um to kind of help against other graveyard related strategies right and even if you're playing against like a blue deck control deck getting rid of their spells in their graveyard is pretty nice ancient grudge this is kind of having the stomping ground right uh you you have that ability to flash this back destroy artifacts makes sense um fatal push in here removal spell cool terminate same thing hey i need some removal spell and then we got three thought seeds if you're playing against a combo based deck that's what that's for right The deck is a little bit linear, though, in the style, so that is one of the ways that you can try to um, mess with it, is it's kind of, hey, I'm just trying to draw cards, discard stuff, play creatures. That's my whole strategy, right? There's not as many lines of play uh, because of the randomness with the deck, because the Burning Inquiry and Goblin Lore are random discards. So you... It, a lot of other decks are, hey, I need to set things up. I need to plan ahead a couple of turns to line things up the way that I really want to. But you can't do that with this. Like, you can kind of say, hey, all right, yes, I know I've got this hollow one in my hand. Let's hope for the best. A lot of this deck is let's hope, right? Let's hope that this is still in my hand after you've decided the three cards that are getting discarded, right? Because it is random, so usually we have our cards get shuffled up, laid out, and your opponent will pick them. Uh, sometimes you can roll dice, but, you know, it's random. As long as it, cards are being discarded at random, it doesn't really matter. So it's hard to really plan that out. And sometimes you can have those great hands and everything lines up, and other times you, you just things fizzle, right? In, in a sense that you're just discarding all your good stuff and now you're stuck with a bunch of lands, right? So it's it's hard sometimes because you can lose to your deck that way, but I want to say that majority of the times it's going to be hard for you to lose to your deck just because of the power level that this deck has, the recursion available uh, with the creatures like 
our Flame Wake Phoenix, like our Blood Gas, like being able to get a Gurmog out, get a Tassiger out. So these later stuff, okay, I'm, I'm in this kind of grindy stuff, I've lost most of my resources, I'm, I've had bad draws into bad discards off the Goblin Lore, the Burning Inquiries, but now, hey, I just top deck this Gurmog English, all that crap that I got, it's gone, now I got a 5-5, five five, right? And now I can return this um, Flame Wake Phoenix, and now, you know, and you just kind of snowball from there. Um, a lot of times people will say, okay, Single target removal works out really well, but again, there's 24 creatures. So you can't just rely purely on removal to get the job done. You also need to consider attacking their graveyard. Being able to say, hey, your reoccurring creatures, your flame wake, your blood gas, they're not coming back. And then I can rely purely on taking out those major creatures that you've got, the fish, things like that. If you have ways to return their fish to their hand, right? Maybe you're running Jace, right? You could say, okay, unsummon it. That works out really well. Um, so there's, there's ways to kind of deal with it. You know, that's one of the things that I've been trying to do is attack their graveyard and just go for more removal spells um, and have kind of a combination because your graveyard hate does work pretty well for it. Um, Graph Digger's Cage, they cannot cast creatures um, from their graveyard. You know, they cannot have them enter from their graveyard. So that will help shut down the Flame Wake. That will help shut down um, the, the Blood Gas from being able to come back. Uh, then you just have to worry about like the Hollow One sneaking in. You have to worry about the Flame Blade just beating you down. Like, so it's. It's a tough deck. It's a powerful deck. It's consistently been putting up good results, hitting in the top 16 of almost every major event, I'd say, since December. So for the last couple months, it's been doing quite well. Um, there is that randomness to it. So there are, you know, sometimes, hey, you just have bad luck and it doesn't work out. So uh, I did want to kind of highlight the power of the deck. For all of you guys sitting at home, um, watching here, and as we go through, bam, bam, bam. I missed one. There we go. Got through them all. Boom. There we go. We're back. So, you know, it's a powerful deck. I recommend you picking it up if you have the chance uh, to play some of the stuff. I know some of the things went up in price. Um, and actually, I'm really curious at how much uh, something like Goblin Lore, you can get a play set now for 20 about 25 dollars for a play set um this card was like 10 cents up until like that rivals of ixalan period where people were starting to experiment with it but it, i mean really it wasn't until the whole pro tour and stuff like that and it just like shot up in price so um Hey, you know, it's a it's around a five dollar card, I'd say. Um, oh wait, I lied. It's a five dollar card on line. It is a twenty five dollar card in paper now. Oh my gosh, that jumped up in price more than I thought it did. Um, so yeah, it's a good deck. If you don't have it, maybe don't <laughs> invest in it. But if you like this style, it's pretty good. Um, one of our buddies that is a human player, burn player, uh, has switched over to this as his main deck to play now. He loves it. Um, he says the different play styles is a lot of fun. Every game is different because of the randomness with it and it's exciting. So that's what's nice about the deck. Definitely something to get practice and reps in if you're going to be planning to go to a bigger event. Um, so that's going to do it for this episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. Let me know what particular decks that you'd like to hear discuss for the meta. Um, let me know what kind of decks you guys are currently playing. Um, in Modern, like I said, I'm playing Grixis Death Shadow right now. Enjoying that. Only played it for about three weeks, so still learning the ins and outs of the deck, but doing a little bit better. Again, I'm starting to stream up a little bit more, um, and then of course all that info about my stream and stuff is in the description um, on the, the channel, um, in the description of the video itself, but if you want to see some Sea of Thieves, some other stuff, I'm trying to talk with Brett about some um, more Pokemon battles, we're going to see about um, getting back into some more Zelda stuff, so a lot of other projects in the work that we're going to start doing, maybe some more magic stuff besides Modern Magic Mondays, you guys will just have to keep your eyes peeled and wait and see for that, but again, that's going to do it for us here tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching guys, and I'll see you guys next game.